As Commissioner for the Digital Agenda, my aim is to ensure every European can capture the huge benefits of new digital tools. There are many such benefits, economic and social, and not least how they transform the relationship between governments and citizens. In countries outside the EU, we have seen citizens using online tools to organize against oppression and determine their democratic destiny. Even within the EU's more established democracies, the online world provides a platform to strengthen accountability and transparency, like online campaigns to build the link between elected and electorates, like open data and open access to science, putting a powerful tool back into the hands of the taxpayers who paid for it, with online services that make public services more effective, convenient and tailored, like healthcare that empowers patients without taking away their independence, with political decision-making processes themselves opened up, making them easier to understand and easier to take part in. But to do those wonderful things, we need the right frameworks and networks. Here are just a few ways how. First, by ensuring net neutrality across Europe. Today, one in four Europeans find online sites and services blocked or censored. But we should not be limiting or restricting the amazing power of this open, innovative platform, nor preventing the new innovative services that people crave. Every European should benefit from a safeguard of open internet access and be able to enjoy new specialized services. So when you buy internet access, you get the internet 100% full, open, unrestricted. Second, by investing in digital public services, the EU had just agreed a new Connecting Europe facility, a 1 billion euro boost for Europe's digital economy with investment in both frost broadband and in the high-quality pan-European public services that run on it. Third, by ensuring the systems that build trust, we have, all yet, we have also just agreed new rules on e-identification, so that when you file a tax return or bid for a government contract online, you can do so with more convenience, confidence and trust and we can secure our systems so that you are protected from hacking and spying, working together to make Europe the world's safest online space. But most of all, Europe needs broadband. We all rely on broadband networks, whether fixed, mobile or Wi-Fi, that are reliable, pervasive and fast, wherever you are in Europe. Yet we still have a long way to go. Still nearly one half of European homes are not covered by fast broadband. Over one in five European adults have never used the internet. Still, data roaming charges can be 50 times higher than domestic rates. To deliver that broadband for all, we need a strong dynamic telco sector, one that isn't stuck in the past, but can provide the innovative services you need for the 21st century. And this opportunity could not come at a better time. The economic crisis is changing into a crisis of faith, a disconnect between citizens and government, breeding mistrust and disengagement. Meanwhile, governments have fewer resources than ever, yet must deliver for ever more demanding citizens, and we have the chance to rebuild that trust, move towards a more open approach that is transparent and collaborative, with government not just for the people, but with the people. And I know how essential digital tools are these days. I know many of you realize it too, not just to our lifestyles, but to our economy and our society too. Across Europe, digital champions are hard at work to spread that message, and they are starting to find success. The EU leaders have already realized that digital matters. Now our proposals for a connected continent are also being discussed by your elected representatives in the European Parliament and ministers from your national governments. To end roaming charges, ensure net neutrality and supply you with seamless connectivity for the 21st century. And I hope those lawmakers can do so and deliver a boost to the European economy, to the European society and to the European democracy.